Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're finally taking a look at our Mono Black Devotion deck, featuring a lot of the new cards from Theros Beyond Death, including a nice reprint with a Grey Merchant of Asphodel, also known as Gary. 5 mana for a 2-4 zombie creature that when it enters a battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is our devotion to black and we gain life equal to the life lost this way. So our deck is very good at amassing a bunch of black devotion and then finishing the game with a Grey Merchant of Asphodel, and we can potentially combo kill the opponent by playing a single Grey Merchant if we also have a Nightmare Shepherd in play and a Sacrifice Outlet. Nightmare Shepherd, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four flying enchantment creature demon that says whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we may exile it and if we do, create a token that's a copy of that creature except it's a 1-1 one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. So when our token enters a battlefield, it will re-trigger any potential enter the battlefield abilities, which of course is great with our Grey Merchant. So all we need is a Nightmare Shepherd in play and some way of sacrificing our Grey Merchant. And we have six potential ways of sacrificing our Grey Merchant. We've got two Two copies of Woestrider and four copies of Ayara, first of Lockthwain, so we'll take a look at those in just a second. So that's way we can potentially combo kill our opponent. And also important to note is that the token we generate from the Nightmare Shepherd still keeps all its devotion, since we're often used to tokens not having any convert mana cost, but in this case the token will keep all its devotion, which of course is quite relevant for our Grey Merchants. So yeah, that's just a sneak peek of what our deck is capable of. So let's take a look at our entire list. And at one mana you may see the absence of Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Oven. Some on a black decks like to play it. Instead we're playing with the four copies of Knight of the Abel Legion, which is a very strong individual card that can potentially win a game by itself, especially against counterspell heavy decks. And even if the Knight turns into a token with Nightmare Shepherd, it still keeps its ability. So a 1-1 Knight of the Abel Legion is still very similar to a 1-2 Knight of the Abel Legion so those two still play quite well with each other. And we also have two copies of Gutter Bones to round out to one drops. Some people like to play the full playset, I think it's totally reasonable to do that as well, as it's uh, quite synergistic with our various sacrifice synergies, especially with Ayara. We can uh, replay Gutter Bones, trigger Ayara, sacrifice it to draw cards, and then maybe replay Gutter Bones in the same turn. Don't want to be exiling the Gutter Bones to the Nightmare Shepherd as much, because we want to be able to get it back from the graveyard over and over again. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Lazatep Reaver as a 2 mana 1-2 that when it enters the battlefield lets us amass one. So if we don't already have a zombie army token in play we get to make one and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So we get 2 creatures for just a single card, which plays great with our sacrifice effects, especially great with an Ayara in play as we get to drain the opponent for 2 and then potentially get to sacrifice both halves to draw 2 cards. So it has a lot of neat synergies in the deck and uh, usually want to sacrifice the zombie army first to keep our devotion in play with the Lazatep Reaver, also better if we top deck another Reaver, so we get to make an additional token instead of putting a counter on the original one to uh, chum block with and buy time until we can get to our powerful late game. And of course also great with our Nightmare Shepherd, as the Reaver will enter the battlefield once again and make another army token potentially. And then we also have two copies of Timurat, Chosen from Death, which adds two devotion, and is a legendary enchantment creature, Demigod, and has two power and toughness equal to our devotion to black, so at the very least that's going to be two, but can potentially grow to be a very high toughness creature that's difficult to get past for ground-based creature decks, and also has a nice ability to exile cards from graveyards, which can be quite relevant against other graveyard decks. And then we also have the full play set of Yarok's Fenlurker, which is great in this deck, adds to Devotion, makes the opponent exile a card from their hand when it enters the battlefield, and we can potentially re-trigger it by sacrificing it with a Nightmare Shepherd in play, and we can also pump it up later in the game as a nice mana sink. So it does a ton of stuff for the deck. Then at 3 mana we get to our Sacrifice uh, Engines. We've got two copies of Woestrider, which enters the battlefield alongside an 0-1 Goat Creature Token, and then we can sacrifice another creature at any point at instant speed to scry one, so it can help us find our various combo pieces like the Grey Merchant and maybe later the Bolas Citadel. And then also escapes for 3 and double black, exiling 4 other cars from our graveyard. And then we get a Woe Strider with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and we get to go token as well. So a nice recursive threat that can enable our various synergies, also provide some uh, sacrifice fodder thanks to the GOAT token. So another very versatile card, and the free activation cost also means we can potentially uh, sacrifice multiple things in the same turn. In response to a sweeper we can scry towards the uh, missing piece, but of course escape does have some diminishing returns. So we're going with uh, two striders and the four Ayaras. 
which is our other sacrifice engine. This one is uh, very synergistic in the deck because whenever a Yara or another black creature enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life, and those uh, life drain triggers add up very quickly, especially with uh, cards like Lazo Dep Reaver making two creatures, so Ayara can kind of win the game by itself if unanswered, and we can tap Ayara, sacrifice another black creature to draw a card, so can sacrifice the goats with it, but most of our other creatures are good to go. And of course uh, drawing cards is also nice, especially when we've got a bunch of uh, creatures we don't mind sacrificing, like the Reaver, the Gutter Bones and uh, maybe later the Fen Lurker once we have a Shepherd in play. And of course Ayara adds 3 Blank Devotion, which is a lot when it comes to Grey Merchant, which is one of the main reasons why we like it over the Strider, but I've also seen decks play 4 Striders and fewer Ayaras, which is also totally reasonable. And then our final 3-drop is Murder's Rider, 3 mana to destroy target creature or planeswalker at instant speed at the cost of 2 life, and afterwards we get a 3 mana 2-3 two, life linker, which adds 2 Devotion, so a great deal and then at 4 mana we've got our 4 copies of Nightmare Shepherd, which besides being a nice combo piece is also just a 4 mana 4 for flyer that can end the game pretty quickly. And we've got a 1 off copy of Erebos Bleak Hearted, which uh, potentially turns into a 5-6 indestructible creature as long as our devotion to black is at least 5. And then whenever a, another creature we control dies we can pay 2 life to draw a card, which is also great since we've got so many sacrifice engines and uh, sacrifice fodder and Erebos can enable his own ability, for one on a black we can sacrifice another creature to give target creature minus two minus one until end of turn. Not an ability we use very often, we're usually relying more on uh, Strider and Ayara to enable Erebos. And then topping off our curve we've got the full playset of Grey Merchant, which is our main finisher, and two copies of Bolas the Citadel, which is also great in this deck. Six mana for a legendary artifact that lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can play the top card of our library. If we cast a spell this way we have to pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than pay its mana cost, and we can also potentially sacrifice 10 non-land permanents to make each opponent lose 10 life. Doesn't come up a whole lot, but for the most part Bolas the Citadel is a very powerful card draw engine, we can play lands of the top for free, of course we're still limited to one land drop per turn, but we also have some nice uh, card draw engines which uh, can potentially help us put lands on the bottom, especially the Strider lets us scry one, so we can uh, bottom lands by sacrificing some uh, random creatures and potentially play multiple spells of the top in the same turn. Ayara is also great with the Citadel since it helps us offset the life loss, but then of course a major combo is just Grey Merchant. Citadel provides 3 extra devotion and the Grey Merchant basically pays for itself in terms of uh, life, so as long as we have a bit of life to start with the Citadel can very quickly take over the game. And then our mana base, 21 Swamps and for Castle Lockthwain as another nice card draw engine in the late game. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and seems reasonable enough. Not the highest density of devotion to lead up to our Grey Merchants. But we'll make it work. Opponent on Monogreen. Brontodon can maybe blow up a Citadel at some point. Yeah, I'm okay double blocking the troll, I think. Keep the Reaver in play in case of uh, Shepherds later. Ayara's a great draw here. Next turn plays Trider. Take three. And we've got five mana for Grey Merchants, so... I might end up jumping with the Reaver and sacrificing it to Ayara. Great Henge is a good one, though. And a Horn Beetle. Horn Beetle picks up a counter, does the Ceratops attack. It does. Can also double block it with Reaver and Strider. But uh, don't really want to lose a ton of devotion. 
Sadly can't sack the goat to Ayara, can only sack black creatures. So I think I'm just gonna jump with Reaver, sack it to Ayara, draw some cards. Alright, so they're gonna give a trample, makes sense. So I guess we didn't really prevent much damage here. Put on down to 13. Harpooner. So we'll need to find something like a, a Nightmare Shepherd soon to combo with our Grey Merchants to help us close the game before the Henge takes over. Not a Brontodon. So Bolas the Citadel not looking too hot with double Brontodon in play. Make that triple Brontodon. Right, I mean, it's a lot of uh, power added to the board here. So we need to find a Shepherd soon. Now they are tapped out so we can jump and a sack to the Strider. Scry towards a Shepherd. A Knight of a Legion is still pretty decent since I can play it alongside Grey Merchant, so I think I'll keep. It's also a Death Touch creature that can maybe trade off later. Points at four. Not quite dead. The life gain from the hench keeping them alive. Knight picks up a counter. Pretty good with the Grey Merchant as well. And yeah, finding a Shepherd wins us the game on the spots. We're at 27, so we can take a hit. And a goose. This is gonna be a big attack. Alright, so let's see. The 3 4 Brontodom we can block pretty easily. The rest uh, is a little bit more complicated. Probably gonna. Just block with Knight of Ebon Legion and sack it to a Yara. And then upkeep, we can still evaluate with the Strider what we want to do. So their biggest creature is the Beetle. And then I might as well double block the Brontodon to take it out. And then we're still taking 10, 22. Yeah, I think we just need to win the game next turn. Can't really uh, take another attack like this. They have a food they can sack to go up to 9, so we don't need a ton of food devotion here to kill them. Alright, perfect. That should do it. Play Shepherds. And Strider in play means we can sack two Grey Merchants. Could also get back Gutter Bones. Play Gutter Bones first for more devotion. Although it doesn't seem necessary. Opponents gain some life. But they're gonna need uh, a little bit more than eight life to survive. Sweet. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play. We've got a bit of a slow hand, but it is powerful if we hit our land drops. I'll try it. Turn three, we could just activate the knights if we don't have anything better to do. Don't really want to trade one damage for one damage. I'm gonna get stomped. Domri's ambushed. Well, at least now the Lovestruck Beast doesn't attack. And as long as we keep hitting our land drops, we should be fine. Clothus, alright. I guess I'm okay to attack now. Although, if they have another, like, stomp in hand, then they could attack, and then if I block, they can stomp, which is bad. Don't know how relevant the two damage is given the context of our hands. And I would rather block with Timurat than with uh, Shepard. Swift End can deal with a creature, although there's no creature we need, absolutely need to kill right now. Can also use Timurat to empty the graveyard, so Clothus doesn't hurt us, but I would rather keep a Murder's uh, Rider for now. Alright, gotta stop this fight. Another Timurat, so I can either play Rider or activate Timurat, exiling the Domri's Ambush, so we don't take two. I'll probably just play the Rider. Well... I thought this game was going to end with uh, Bolas Citadel, but the game might end before we even get to 6 mana. If they want to activate Castle Embereth, I'm fine with that. Ember Cleave makes sense. Get to exile it with the Shepherds instead of with the Rider's ability, so we still get a 1 1 life linker. And yeah, that should be enough to close out this game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Nice cheap curve. Bit of removal and then Grey Merchant to try and take over. Opponent's got the same idea. Yeah, I'll play my knights and then we can just block. And double one drop next turn. Alright, that's one way to punish that block. So they might be Black Red Knights instead of Black Devotion. They could still play the Paragon. In Blank Devotion, it's just uh, less common. Yeah, I'll just take it. Next turn I can keep up 3 mana, which both threatens Knight of Abolition and Murder Strider. So yeah, they are just mono-black knights. So not necessarily Devotion, although they could play Grey Merchant at the top end for sure. Yeah, we'll just pass. Gutter Bones in front of Paragon. And then I'll probably Murder Strider one of the Knights of Evil Legion. 
And they're gonna hang back with the Paragon, which makes sense. So I could double block Knight of Ebon Legion. Kind of offering the trade, and if they pump, I can just kill the one they pump to kind of waste their turn. Alright, got a lot of Grey Merchants incoming. Now the plan is to just trade Knight for Knight. Alright, the pump didn't seem necessary, but uh... Sure. Maybe they didn't have another play. Palmar Knights just as a Death Toucher. I guess we'll start playing Riders. Nightmare Shepherd, a good one. I guess we're not blocking with Murder Strider. I can just trade Gutter Bones for Paragon to get a 1 1 token. And then. Next turn I can kill the Shepherd and attack, or keep it back. Alright, so yeah, I think we need to kill the Shepherd before we do anything else. So if I attack, I put myself to one. Basically, yeah, I guess so. I could stay back, but attacking seems better, because that way we keep our devotion as well. And I can get back gutter bones. So we're not that on board. And we've got a couple of grey merchants here. Ooh, another Order of Midnight, getting back Shepherd. That's bad news. So all we can do is play Gutter Bones, play Grey Merchant, but that might not be enough here. So we're at 6, so we're dead to the Flyer, so I have to attack just to gain 2 life. Which feels pretty bad. <laughs> All the Grey Merchants. I think we're still dead here. Can hit for 4. But we're taking 8 in the air. Well, close game. If we had time to deploy... ...all our Grey Merchants, we definitely would have gotten there. GG's. The Blacklands Paragon at the start definitely got us pretty good. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand really needs to draw a third land, but then it could be fine. Grey Merchant's a great card, but usually you don't want to start with it in your opening hand. It's much better to draw it late when you already have a bit of devotion built up. Risen Reef, so we're point on blue green ramp. And land is great. 
We'll attack, see what they do. They probably take it, and then we have to decide whether to kill the Risen Reef or play Strider. They're stuck on two forests, so unless they go island into Risen Reef or play a Leafkin Druid, they won't play another elemental next turn, so it could be better to Strider first for the additional pressure. And that can also help me hit my land drops. But it never feels great to let an opponent untap with Risen Reef in play. That's just another goose. Tap Breeding Pool, so they probably don't have another Risen Reef in hand. And no Leafkin Druids. Alright. Could have considered sacking the Go Token to scry on upkeep. Wanted to see what our draw step gave us first. Can attack with pretty much everyone except the goats. And then I'm probably just gonna keep a murder strider. The plan is probably just to kill the Risen Reef, but if uh, they want to trade, that's fine by me. Can't really prevent them ramping since they have two copies of Gilded Goose. Alright, opponent does trade for Gutter Bones. So in that case, can let damage happen. And then I'll just keep a Murder Strider instead of getting back Gutter Bones. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then we can kill whatever they ramp into here. Cavalier, Nyssa, you name it. Opponent definitely knows we have a Murder Strider in hand since that's the only thing that would make sense. So they're just going to play a small Krasis, kind of as bait. So I don't think we're going to bite, just let them have the Krasis. And save our removal for later. So let's try this. They might block the Reaver with Krasis instead, they might trade. But this way we get to get back Gutter Bones and play Timurat. And if we draw land, we can Grey Merchant, otherwise we've got Gutter Bones plus Murder Strider to maybe kill Anissa. And there's Nissa. I'll take three. Alright, so... What happens if we kill the land? Don't quite get to finish off Nissa. So yeah, let's just... Uh, Get rid of their Planeswalker. And play Gutter Bones. They probably should have uh, made some food in response here. Although maybe they value having a 3-3 on defense. Which is also reasonable. Timurat can now block the 3-3. And yeah, double Grey Merchants could be enough to close out this game. Alright, so could play Murder Strider first to increase their devotion, but of course every turn that goes by also means they get to make food with Goose, which represents a bit of life. So maybe the plan is just Grey Merchant into Grey Merchant, maybe attack with all. Points at 5. Yeah, I could attack with all here. Doesn't get in a lot of damage, though. They could put Forest on Gutter Bones. Block the two one-powered creatures, take 2. Don't really expect any Flash creatures, although they could technically have Ambusher. It is a little weird that they didn't do anything with all that mana, so maybe I should respect it. They're gonna take a Blast Zone to 3. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Second Grey Merchant was gonna seal the deal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn 1 Gutter Bones, turn 2 Knights, turn 3 Ayara.
up against the red deck. Looks like they have a shock in hand. Let's find out. They could take two and then shock my Knight of Ebon Legion, but I think I still play it. Yep. Rimrock Knights. Fair enough. Probably just play a Yaram Pass. Don't really want to race the red deck. Especially with uh, the cards we have in hand. And Ayara plus Gutter Bones is pretty strong if we can keep that in play. Reaver's also nice. Probably just sag the token now to hit our land drop, maybe. Could also sag the gutter bones, that way if we hit a land drop we can get it back right away. Nah. Gotta watch out for Amber Cleave, that's kind of the scary card here. Torbran, pretty scary too. So I could double block Inax. They get two tokens afterwards. Or I could chump and trade for Knight, they get one token. The fact that they're attacking could imply that they have another Anax in hand. And I kind of want to keep the Reaver in play, so that if we play Shepherd, I can sack Reaver and get two more tokens. So I think I'm just going to trade for the Rimrock Knight. Chumping Anax could also be an option. But I also want to reduce their uh, board presence a little bit. And then for now we can play Shepherds. And pass a turn. So they don't have enough mana to Ember Cleave me. So I'm thinking I just jump Anax and then take, what is this, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But I also get to gain a bit more thanks to Ayara. So right now I could play Erebos and we would have enough devotion for it to be a creature. That being said, I'm pretty terrified of an Amber Cleave off the top. In which case I need to keep Murder Strider at the ready. And I could also kill Torbran as a fail case, which is not a bad fail case. So I think we just pass. Alright, Porn can attack. I do have four cards in hand, so the robber does find a card here. But it was just a land. Alright, so how do we block? In theory... These would be fine blocks. And then I can sack something to Ayara. And then if they... Amber Cleave, I can kill whatever the Amber Cleave. Sure. We're gonna shock the Shepherd. So I guess now I could Murder Strider Torbrand so the Shepherd survives. And then we'll sag the token. I still would have died to an Amber Cleave on Anax there if they respond to the sacrifice, but it didn't seem like they had one. Play back up Anax just to make some tokens. And I kind of suspected they had another one in hand from the start when they wanted to trade it off. Alright, Grey Merchant seems good here. 
And attack for four. Sweet. Well, that was a close game. If they had the Ember Cleave near the end, we definitely could have died. So that's uh, one of the scarier cards alongside Torbran and uh, Anex, of course. So yeah, Mono Black Devotion. There's a lot of ways to build it, but uh, overall I've been pretty happy with this uh, iteration. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.